All right. Hi, my name is Mark Goldner, and I'm sitting here with Brian J. L. Glass, author of Mice Templar and Magician's Apprentice. I think you've also done Thor. I did Thor First Thunder for Marvel. I did a Valkyrie one shot that's collected in the Women of Marvel trade paperback. Uh, I've done a few other Marvel things, if you'd rattle them off. Should I uh, rattle off my other Marvel stuff? Go for it. Uh, I did a lot of uh, Thor uh, movie-related things. I did the Thor I f uh, yeah, the Thor iPhone movie tie-in game. So I, I wrote the video game. Really? I did not know that. Yeah. How yeah, was it writing a video game? Uh, than, uh, very much so, yeah. It was a, a bit more of a challenge, but uh, in the end, I, I felt very rewarded by it. Uh, I wrote the Burger King Thor miniseries for the Kids Club, and that was a blast. It was, uh, y you'd think it would just be a throwaway story, but in the end, I was extremely proud of this four issue, all true all ages title, and uh, was able to create a sense of drama, action, and excitement within a lot of restrictions, because it was for nationwide distribution to kids. You mentioned just a little while ago that uh, some people have thought that you are more geared towards a fancy author, but you've shown that you're able to do all different types of genres, and how would you try to exemplify that to other people, that you are not just one author just because you're writing, quote-unquote, a fantasy-style book? Uh, the, the best way to prove that you can do work outside of a genre you've been pigeonholed in is to do work outside of the genre you've been pigeonholed in. Uh, I wrote a novel, Quixote. Uh, it's the only supernatural horror version of the classic Cervantes' Don Quixote tale. And, uh, but that came out in 2005. And uh, now through Image, I'm, I'm currently in development of a, a multitude of different miniseries that are all in very distinct different genres to show that I can do superheroes, I can do horror and suspense, I can do crime, I can do science fiction. And uh, we'll see which one of them takes off. Or maybe all of them will take off. <laughs> so, going back to
mythology that's kind of a, a mythological melding pot of all the tons of sources, uh, Celtic mythology, uh, Norse mythology, uh, aspects of a Judeo-Christian culture and tradition, and uh, we kind of chose all these elements, which elements mesh very well together, and created what feels like a very viable, real mythology, or as real as a mythology can be. I believe that it's the second volume that has a picture of... I thought it was with a hood. Let's take a look at this. This character? Yes. Uh, this is Cassius, who is referred to in Volume 1 as the Hooded One. Uh, but uh, he, spoilers here, he's set up to be a bad guy, but no, he's not. He's, uh, in Volume 2, he becomes Carrick's true mentor character uh, after he's, I don't want to give spoilers away here, but uh, he's, he's my favorite character in the series, Cassius. He's a character that carries the, the guilt of a lot of uh, past uh, bad, bad decisions he made in the past with huge ramifications and consequences, and now here he is 20 years later, a generation later, trying to pick up the pieces and doing so by taking this new uh, young boy under his under his mantle, very reluctantly at first. That's just one of the many uh, aspects of the story of my stepfather. Was this character per se influenced possibly by, have you ever played the game Assassin's Creed? Uh, actually, I, I am not. I'm not a video game player, even though I wrote a video game. That's part of what made it a challenge. But uh, I'm not an avid game player. I just didn't get into that at the time. But uh, so I think he could give the Assassin's Creed guy a run for his money. But looks <laughs> pretty good there. Yeah. So going towards uh, there's one other book that I actually read recently. Um, I haven't seen that on your table. So, what would you say about this? I know you adapted, this is not your original line, this was your adaption for the comics. Yes, this is based on the famous series of uh, novels written by Raymond E. Feist, uh, creator of this incredible fantasy world known as the Rift War Saga. And uh, when Marvel Comics uh, got the rights to do the adaptation of Raymond Feist's work, I was the fellow, I guess because of Mice Templar, that uh, got the assignment to begin adapting the uh, Feist, not Mr. Feist novels into comic form for Marvel to publish. And the first novel in the series in England was just this one massive tome the size of all of Lord of the Rings, simply called Magician. But in America, they split Magician into two separate novels called Magician Apprentice and Magician Master. At Marvel, my adaptation of the first half, Magician Master, was done in a very complicated fashion, two volumes called Magician Apprentice, and the climactic third volume they called Rift War. But together, those three graphic novels make up the adaptation of Magician Apprentice. Since then, just this past summer, Marvel began adapting the second book of the series, Magician Master. They called on me to do the adaptation once again, and uh, that's available right now as a digital download through Marvel, the first five issues, and in January it'll be released in the next collected hardcover form. And then we'll see if they have me continuing the adaptation. Uh, we'll wait and see. Hocus Pocus kind of magic. It's not 
type magic. It's it's actually their magic is tied in with the foundation of a multiverse, multiple dimensions. It's really a pretty fascinating tale. And the rifts that make up the rift war are the portals between other dimensions, other worlds. And in the space between worlds is a sentient energy force that is the enemy of all life in the established world. So it's an incredibly original, brilliant work that Raymond Feist created. I feel like uh, if you've ever read any of Arthur C. Clarke's works, he's mentioned that small magic is science that has yet to be discovered. Yes, I would concur with that. I mean, I think you've done a great job. Thank you. So, you know, Yeah, yeah. You're at New York Comic Con. Yeah, yeah. That was before uh, the two Harvey Awards. That was very exciting to get the the, uh, the recognition from my peers in the industry. Uh, we've been nominated for seven, and we've won twice. And I'm uh, incredibly honored, and uh, I'm honored to have been uh, recognized in that fashion. And I'm incredibly proud of the work that I've done to receive that recognition. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have an interesting project that I'm going to talk with him about that you viewers will see later. Thank you.